AIDS was first detected in Rwanda in the 1980s at the University Teaching Hospital of Kigali Sehashiuka. With no cure and no vaccine, the AIDS virus HIV was initially seen as a death sentence. People living with the virus were said to be in serious danger and they were placed in quarantine. The discovery of antiretroviral drugs for HIV treatment and their introduction in Rwanda helped transform that perception. However, in those early years, antiretroviral treatment, ART, was only offered in national referral hospitals and by a limited number of doctors. Around 1998-1997, in terms of antiretroviral therapy, it was available but on private market and only those who could afford it could offer them, could get the ART. And, uh, the late 90s is the time that uh, the government uh, was uh, putting in place institutions to, to, to also respond to HIV and AIDS and at the same time doing a great job at advocacy and trying to start mobilizing resources for HIV and AIDS. In response to global advocacy efforts, and the emergence of generic versions of ARV drugs, treatment started to become more affordable at the start of the millennium. FHR decided at this time to put $1 million uh, to test pilot uh, a number of sites uh, as to how well can we do this, uh, how easily can this be done at the district level, at the health center level, and uh, how can we maintain uh, adherence um, as well as having staff, a uh, variety of staff providing the services. Later on, we were joined by USAID. So this was a pioneering effort between FHI 360, the uh, Minist uh, Minister of Health in Rwanda, uh, the Birgo Center, Birgo Center specifically, and the US government. Along with Kabgai Hospital and Ruri Hospital, Bidyogo Social Medical Center was one of the first three Rwandan health facilities at decentralized level to offer ART. These initial learning sites were established with oversight from the Ministry of Health, with financial assistance from USAID and with technical input from FHI 360 under the Implementing AIDS Prevention and Care Project, otherwise known as Impact Rwanda. In 1988, we established aid social services to provide information on HIV, offer voluntary testing, prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV, and follow-up of female sex workers. In 2003, the Biryogo Socio-Medical Center became the first site in Rwanda to have started ARV treatment. Under the leadership of the government of Rwanda and with advocacy efforts of development partners, cheaper, generic versions of ARV drugs became available at the start of the millennium. However, many people were still doubtful about whether health centers and other small clinics had the capacity to deliver AIDS care to patients and especially to safely and effectively administer the drugs but Video Go demonstrated that it was possible. The experience there produced knowledge and evidence-based practices that helped to reveal that decentralized HIV care was not only possible at district hospitals, but also at the primary health center level in resource-constrained settings. Once ART services had been established, Video Go SMC began offering ARVs for free to clients the first health facility in Rwanda to have done so. Yet, it was only with a strong commitment from the government of Rwanda and a major investment from the U.S. President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFAR, under FHI 360's impact project in 2004, that Biryogo could start to effectively respond to the overwhelming need and demand for care. It was just a matter of time before other health centers also started offering these services. We initially took in patients coming from anywhere. 
But since they came in large numbers, we later decided to refer them to the health centers closer to home. After the impact project came the USAID's HIV AIDS Clinical Services Program in Rwanda, HCSP, which started in 2007. It was awarded to three organizations, FHI 360, to cover the southern province, the Elizabeth Glaser Pediatric AIDS Foundation to cover the eastern province, and IntraHealth International to cover the northeastern province. While our previous project aimed to help the Minister of Health introduce chi-related uh, clinical HIV services, HCSP uh, built upon those successes by scaling up them and uh, uh, reinforcing the quality of services. There was also another component, uh, health system strengthening, whereby programs help assist the government of Rwanda to operationalize its decentralization policies by reinforcing the district health networks. In addition to reinforcing HIV-related care and treatment services, HCSP contributed to Rwanda's health sector strategic plan by establishing a more comprehensive package of services in the targeted health facilities. This involved promoting the integration of HIV services with services focusing on family planning, tuberculosis, maternal, neonatal and child health, gender-based violence and nutrition. We have seen uh, an important improvement in the care and treatment of people living with HIV in Rwanda. And I've seen a tremendous change, positive change in the access to services uh, from two facilities in 2002 to more than 400 by, by today. Uh, almost 90% of health facilities are giving um, HIV full package of services, but also the, the people themselves benefiting from the services are getting better health. More than 110,000 people are receiving antiretroviral treatments and they get better over time. Uh, we have seen also the mortality de de decreasing uh, up to 6% uh, according to the last estimations. Uh, we have seen uh, people getting back to work after many years uh, sleeping in hospitals because of AIDS. So I would say that uh, there's a very good change of life for people living with HIV because of uh, the care and treatment, because of antiretroviral treatment, because of different programs that the country managed to put in place with partners. And it's good that this project has managed to, to, to increase the capacity at a certain level especially for the sites that they have been supporting. Program inputs included training, accompanied supervision and support of health personnel, as well as infrastructural enhancements, provision of job aids and data management tools, and contributions to national level conferences, technical working groups and policy development. Before, we weren't trained. We just handled cases of HIV in whatever way we could. But with the training we got from FHI 360, it really improved the quality of the services we could give to people living with HIV. Before the intervention, HIV prevalence was at 24% here. Yet, as of this past October, it was down to 6%. Elisa, a client of Biryogo, was one of the first four individuals in Rwanda to receive antiretroviral treatment ART. Ever since I began taking ARVs, my situation has really improved because I accepted myself. It is since then that I realized I am a person just like anyone else. And I started to work, something I could do before because I was too sick. At one time, I even had tuberculosis and zona, and I got myself treated. Nowadays, my opportunistic infections are done, and I am doing well. 
byarakize HCSP also supported a special intervention tailored to most at risk populations in urban areas where prevalence of sexually transmitted infections including HIV is the highest Bidyogo was one of two health centers in Kigali to offer this program, which centered on STI management among female sex workers and provided HIV prevention education, support for health insurance, and economic strengthening opportunities. We offered STI testing every three months for women who are HIV negative, and those who are HIV positive received follow-up from the ART service. The support received had an obvious effect. Since we used to see an average of 24 STI cases per month, but at the end of this past September, we only had a single case. The number of cases of STIs had noticeably reduced. One of FHI 360's main contributions to the national program in Rwanda was to conduct a study which demonstrated that nurses are capable of safely and effectively administering ART and following up HIV-positive patients. In 2010, the government of Rwanda adopted this task-shifting approach as national protocol and HCSP helped to roll it out nationwide in 2011. So one thing that we have seen through this project is to get the updated protocols and guidelines through the technical working groups, contribution of uh, the experts and uh, the expertise from uh, the team that were in the country or outside the country, that the policy of uh, giving some task to nurses was developed and this project was among the key um, support of, 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 of the process and we managed to implement it countrywide and is working, is helping uh, to reduce the loss of follow-up, to follow the patients at health center level. During the five years of HCSP, FHI 360 supported six district health units, five district pharmacies, five district hospitals, and 63 primary health centers within nine of the country's 30 districts. At the end of the project, we can be satisfied that we achieved our objective. As an example, the number of health services which are providing the comprehensive HIV services increased and in the district which received the support, all health services are providing comprehensive and integrated HIV services. Secondly, all health districts are now able to plan and coordinate meetings, plan and execute trainings and conduct supervision for services and, and quality improvement. As public health needs change and the context evolves in Rwanda, FHI 360 is poised to continue playing a key role in Rwanda's development through other projects and initiatives. The next step is, again, uh, HIV is not the only health issue. Uh, and it is important that the capacity that we, uh, FHI 360 and USAID has helped develop in this country can then be used to address other issues. One important issue is, for example, non-communicable diseases. By putting people on treatment, people with AIDS on treatment, you extend their lives, you improve the quality of their lives, but they are also still subject to other diseases like hypertension, like diabetes, or other non-communicable diseases such as cancers. The platform that we have together built this partnership of USAID, FHI 360, the Ministry of Health in Rwanda at the Birugo Center will enable us to make sure that we don't save people from HIV and then let them die from other diseases that are easily preventable or easily uh, curable. FHI 360 believes that sustainability comes from building the capacity of individuals, communities and countries to address their needs, and that partnering with governments, civil society organizations, 
the private sector and communities leads to success. The project is ending and the life continues. We still have the patients to follow, to treat and to make sure that they are receiving a good quality of, of treatments and the other related services. We are not going to, to, to stop what this project has achieved, but we are going to build on that and even improve more. Because HIV management is very dynamic. Every time there's a new thing, uh, there's a new drugs, a new uh, way of uh, handling, that we always make sure that Rwanda uh, move on it as a first country. And we always work with different partners in country or outside uh, to make sure that we are not working alone as a country, but we are working as a global network for the best life of people living with HIV. On behalf of FHI 360 and the HCSP team in particular, we would like to thank all of the partners who together made this program a success. In particular, I'd like to recognize uh, USAID and PEPFAR for the financial support, the Government of Rwanda through the uh, Ministry of Health, the Rwanda Biomedical Center, and the district authorities for their leadership, uh, the development partners for their collaboration, and of course all of the district health units, district pharmacies, hospitals and health centers who were the real implementers of the program. The center is very appreciative of the support we got from FHI 360. We received both financial assistance to initially develop the center and we received technical assistance for the training of health providers and especially we got collaboration and friendship. The project is ending, but our friendship and the gratitude that we have for FHI 360 will not end, ever.